What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I've got a whole PC already assembled right in front of you. Well, this is actually a PC that I assembled for a client about three years ago and they reached out to me saying that it's having some overheating problems and wanted me to take a look. So I'm a nice guy and I figured, well, maybe a good opportunity to make some content. So here we are. Let's go. Alrighty, so as mentioned, the client says that this PC is overheating or causing a lot of heat uh, in general. It, that remains to be seen exactly what's going on. Uh, I did ask, do we have any sudden power shutdowns? Did we have any weird smells or noises? None of that. Basically, we're concerned with the amount of heat coming from around the graphics card area. I don't know if that meant that they were actually taking off the side panel and like putting their hands in and around it, or if the graphics card itself was measurably going very high in temperature and causing performance related issues. Again, that's probably all the stuff that we're gonna have to test here independently. But the main thing here is we're gonna have to re try to recreate the problem that they explained to me. So what we got here is I didn't wanna take off the glass side panel just because normally that is how the state of the PC would be when they're using it. So I want to keep it as baseline controlled as possible and just see what we can recreate based on what they've told me so far. So what we're gonna do here is just get all set up. I'm gonna grab some power here. We're gonna plug everything in. I'm gonna get a little monitor, portable monitor here set up right here on the table and we'll take a look at what's going on. I'm gonna give this PC a boot. Okay. Looks like we got all fans spinning and lighting up. I'm gonna come around here to you guys and see what we can see. All right, we got a post and we are Booting into Windows, excuse the glare a little bit on the side of the PC. Again, we want to try to troubleshoot it in its native state, being that he's operating with the glass panel on, so we're going to get that checked out as well. Alrighty, we are in Windows, and one thing I'm noticing with the PC is it may be that this glass is slightly tinted, especially in the front, but it's not really that dark and it seems like the lights on the fans these are an up here six pack that i installed about three years ago they are starting to look pretty dim so i'm wondering i mean that's obviously just aesthetics at this point but i'm wondering if you know the fans are performing okay i can feel a fair amount of air coming out the back so i don't think there's an any issue at least with the fan motors moving air across the system but the main concern here is making sure that everything is operating as it should so let's take a look here and start doing some tests Alrighty. so what we got here is just a readout out of our current running temperatures and clock speeds so I want to look at the CPU first just to see uh, yeah pretty darn chill right now at idle 23 we're basically at room temperature yeah nothing wrong there at all for sure and then the GPU I also want to take a look at too just to see where it's at here we go GPU we're currently at about 33 degrees Celsius nothing really standing out here for me so far so but again that remains to be seen let's throw some benchmarks at it Okay, we're going to be opening up Cinebench here. I'm going to leave hardware info up just to monitor temperatures as we run this. I guess we'll do a 10 minute thermal throttling test just to let it run for a good while and just to get a good read on the system and go ahead and start it up. Yeah, that's extremely chill. It's not even really moving. We're at 46 degrees. We'll let that go for a little bit. We'll circle back on this in 10 minutes and see what the CPU looks like just to make sure that the CPU isn't contributing to any type of temperature increases that they've mentioned. Alrighty, so this Cinebench run for 10 minutes is now about completing, but the main thing here is it's been running for about 10 minutes. So let's take a look at our temperatures real quick. And looks like the highest temperature that we hit, at least on the CPU, was 56 degrees, which is pretty darn chill. Currently running at 52, average is yeah 46 degrees. There's nothing that I can see wrong with it here. So that being said, let's close off the Cinebench test and then let's get a Heaven Benchmark running and that should really hammer the GPU in terms of at least producing some heat. Alrighty, so we are back after right at 10 minutes of running Heaven Benchmark. Highest temperature recorded 73 degrees, average 64 right now current 72 degrees. That is perfectly normal in terms of temperature. So I'm, I'm a little not sure what's going on here in terms of the problem that they're reporting. I don't see any temperature runaway here and feeling the back of the PC here. Sure, yeah, there's a little bit of heat coming off of it, but it's actually pretty minimal, what I would consider. This isn't super, super high-end components that is gonna produce a lot of heat. Obviously, any kind of computer is gonna produce some form of heat, but this is definitely not runaway overheating scenario. So let's do this. Let's keep heaven running and really just try to slam it with all kinds of heat. And let's open up Cinebench again and run that 
while we're running Heaven Benchmark. So we're gonna have a very high load on the CPU and the GPU at the same time. Basically, your worst case scenario, obviously it's very, very unrealistic in terms of real world scenarios, but we're gonna just do this just to see if we can generate any kind of runaway heat scenario because right now I'm not seeing it. All right, just make sure Cinebench is starting up. Okay, and then we still got Heaven running and we've got HW Info 64, CPU temperature is starting to climb up. Let's see if we fully can saturate this case and see if we get some type of hardware related heat issue that I'm really failing to find at this point. Alrighty, so I moved back here so you guys can see me as we talk about what was going on. So, as a recap, we've got the PC right now under full tilt load. Actually, it's 100% everything. We've got still Cinebench running at the same time as Heaven looping and I'm looking at my temperatures here and I, let me grab my mouse actually. But what we got here is, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to see this, unfortunately. Uh, we are sitting at currently 59 degrees on the CPU. The highest temperature it saw was 65 degrees. And for GPU, highest recorded temperature, 71 degrees and 68. So even through saturating the interior of the system a little bit more with heat, it's, it's definitely pulling out heat. Me standing behind it wouldn't be comfortable if you're standing or sitting near it for long periods of time, especially under heavy use like gaming or whatever. But uh, I mean, yeah, if you don't have a well ventilated room, this will start to climb up and get warmer and warmer and warmer. And it's gonna act as a little bit of a heat source for the room, but that is considerably normal. And what we see here is more than just normal. Actually, I'd, I'd say we have pretty good looking temps. I do have a laser thermometer. I'm just gonna kind of point it near the exhaust vents of the GPU. And just to give you a fair idea of how it could heat up your room, although you probably can't see this, I will try to put that close to the camera. I don't know if that's gonna be visible or not, but it's reading 101 degrees. Let me do it one more time, just in case you guys didn't see. Yeah, now reading 102 degrees coming off the back where the GPU is. So that's 102 degrees that is exiting the PC. Again, obviously being electronics, electronic, electronics produce heat. We definitely, you know, are seeing that right here, right now, but it's nothing that's run away. We're not thermal throttling and it could run like this, honestly, probably the entire day without an issue. Obviously it might make your room more uncomfortable. Well, maybe you guys caught it earlier. I sure didn't, but I'm glad I looked at it again. This fan right here is not spinning. Although obviously I think we've ruled out a, there being a thermal problem, but that is a problem. You know, we want to be able to pull in as much cool air as possible. Let's see if I can get that fixed. Yeah, this fan is uh, a little on the loose side. I can't imagine I did that, but you know, who knows? Looks like it caused the fan to bind up and not spin. These other ones are good and solid in there. So I, I don't know if, what the heck happened there, but. I'm gonna get that zipped down, make sure that doesn't happen again for him. There we go. All of them are feeling good. Yeah, somehow, some way this one got loose or was always loose. Just make sure it boots back up. There we go. Spinning like normal, good. Well, if anything, we at least fixed that problem. Day two. Alrighty guys, so we are back obviously a new day and my need for a haircut is even ever more showing at this point. But that all aside, I got a chance to talk to my client and got a little more information about what was going on. The main problem here is, as we noticed, we weren't really component level overheating. We weren't even close. And that wasn't the problem. The problem here actually is just the PC just producing too much heat into the room. So it is Texas here where my client lives as well. Luckily, they were able to just drop this PC off with me. But in Texas, being the middle of the summer, it is outrageously hot. And this is one of the hottest summers that I can personally remember in the near 30 years that I've lived here. This pop isn't working, Benny. I'm baking like a toasted cheese here. It's so hot here. Having a gaming PC, gaming for multiple hours on end in a closed off room is just introducing an element that is gonna be very hard to combat no matter what kind of air conditioning you've got, unless basically you just throw a portable unit in that room. Now that is an option, but that's a pretty extreme option, putting like a window unit in that room because then you're really introducing a lot of extra power draw 
which I don't know if uh, that's going to be super advisable, although be it some type of option. Now, there are other options as well, and I've already discussed this with my client. Here are some things that you can do because I really don't see a problem with this PC other than, well, this blue screen we'll get to here in a minute, but there really isn't a overheating problem with this PC. Basically, we just need to introduce more ventilation to that room being that maybe he can game with the door open, be in a bedroom, try to draw some of that heat out because heat will move to cold uh, through normal convection means or try to actually push the hot air out by putting like a fan at the, at the door, et cetera, et cetera. Try to introduce more ventilation in that room because if he's got that door closed off, even with the AC running in the house, he's introducing a heating element being the PC here and it's just gonna ultimately become uncomfortable. So unfortunately, I didn't really have anything other to say to my client other than, I'm sorry, but this is kind of just how it is. But I got to thinking, well, maybe there are some things that we can do with the PC that can reduce some heat. And I didn't want to do anything drastic like undervolting just because that's a lot of guessing and checking, guessing and checking in. And it's not a long-term type solution because there could introduce some instabilities there. That's kind of play it at your own risk if that's something you want to do because that can definitely improve temperatures and heat reduction within a system. So I, I was looking at these fans here and these are kind of, they're pretty cheap fans. They're up here, six pack fans. And the big thing here is that they're on a constant static speed. So these fans, I believe turn anywhere between, I'm trying, I'm guessing 1300 to 1500 RPMs and it's static throughout the whole system. So imagine you're sitting in a room for a few hours gaming, which he likes to play Fortnite is what he said that you basically start heating up quite a bit when he's playing Fortnite. 1500 RPMs worth of fan exhaust just blasting for three hours. Yeah, it's going to get hot. So I thought, well, there could be an option where we could get some different fans and it's not going to reduce the internal temperatures of the PC, but we could look at running the fans slower to reduce the amount of volume of hot air exhaust into that room. So that's what we're going to explore here in the remainder of this video. I've got some new fans here. This is from Easy DIY. I just went on Amazon, found a six pack that I could basically do a full swap and replace. I think they will look a little bit cooler in terms of aesthetic, but the big thing is this has a speed control. They can go all the way down to 500 RPMs, which is going to drastically reduce the amount of air volume coming out of the PC, but then again, is gonna raise temperatures in the PC, but we'll test that. We'll see if that's okay. I think based on our previous tests, the system doesn't run terribly hot to begin with, internally anyway. Uh, so I think we'll be pretty fine with putting in some fans and at least giving them an option to lower the fan speed to reduce some of the hot air that's coming out of the PC and ultimately heating up his room. Now, one last thing here is, as I've already alluded to, we've got a blue screen here. Well, so I was trying to, and when talking with a client, reproduce everything that he was doing. So like, okay, give me your Windows password. We'll get in there. I'll start playing on your account, basically make it complete apples to apples. Well, so I took out my SSD that I was testing with right here. And that just be my SSD that I usually have my tools on. And this is what I got. So I swapped out his old, put mine in, did some testing and then swapped his back and boom, I, I couldn't believe it. So we've got a dead hard drive on our hands as well. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And then we'll do final testing of these new fans. Alrighty, so we've got the new fans in and man, they are looking so much better than those old dinky fans. Those things were definitely probably worn out and time to be on their way out. But we've got a remote here, obviously just got to set on the default RGB. We can do all kinds of light settings so he can set it whatever he wants. But the main focus here that I'm concerned about is we've got a fan plus and minus configurable button to increase fan speed or lower it. And like I said, the idea here is if we lower the fan speed, it's lowering the amount of volume of hot air that's entering his game room and ultimately hopefully keeping the room a bit cooler so i just want to see i think we're on lowest so there's a one notch up and there's another i think there's only three settings yeah that's it I'll get my mic up there just so you guys can hear it but 
Here's high. Medium. Low. So even the highest is actually pretty quiet. But the good thing is we've got them all synced up. So and I really can hardly feel any air coming out of the back now. So the idea here is we want to be able to test that. So we want to see how much the components internally now are going to heat up because we don't have as much volumetric air exiting the PC. So let's put the PC through the sum of the same benchmark test to see if it's, this is going to be too low of a fan speed to keep things cool or if it's going to be just right to keep the PC internally just fine in temperature, but also his gaming room. Alrighty, we have just officially ended our last Cinebench run. It's still concluding. So with everything still running, the highest temperature that we came up to on the CPU core package was 73 degrees, currently running at 71. And previously we were getting about 65. So we, we have come up in temperature, but nothing dangerously high. Obviously 70s went under full tilt load. I'd say it's pretty normal, not anything to be afraid about. And that is good because that allows us to run the fan slower to produce less heat into our room. So let's see what the GPU got up to. That one I'm just ever so curious about. So GPUs top, yeah, wow. Actually, I'm surprised. You know, actually that kind of makes sense too because the GPU is running its own independent fans that are variable by temperature. So we do have a fair amount of heat kind of leaking out about where the GPU is installed on the PCIe expansion slots, but not as much heat coming out here at the back fan. So that's in effect what we wanted, right? We have heat being produced into a room while gaming and i can feel it right now we're still running through the test but we're on low fan speed now the idea here was get some fans that had some variable control that we can kind of override and that was the big thing is being able to override something like a pwm control fan where as temperatures rise the speed increases now obviously you can control that too with a fan curve in your motherboard but the thing was that we didn't really have that we just had a static speed fan before which we've now thrown in the garbage that was running at 13 to 1500 rpm i wanted to be able to repopulate the system with another six fan since that's what he had before and we've i think one accomplished a, a lot better aesthetic but two because we we're kind of doing the same thing and we don't have enough splitters and all that stuff it was just easier to buy a setup that has a remote like this that allows me to just manually go in here and increase or lower fan speed which this is what i'm basically going to tell the client this is about the best i can do for you other than you keeping the door open allowing a little more ventilation in the room lowering your ac in your house obviously that's going to cost money running a fan to push the air out of the room again that's going to cost money I think this is probably the most budget way to do it because these fans don't draw a lot of power. And the main thing here is me standing behind it, still at running full tilt. I don't feel anywhere near the amount of heat coming off the system like it was doing before. So I'm wagering on this being mission accomplished. So obviously this was a bit of an adventure guys, a little bit of a different kind of format of a video where we took back a client machine and tried to introduce some elements to help them lower their temperatures in their gaming room to be more comfortable while gaming. There's obviously some things to do that we've already discussed. I think ultimately what we're landing on here is probably going to be the best for them. So hopefully you guys found this video informative in that fashion. So if you're running hot in your gaming room, at least you know you got some options. Thanks for tuning in to this one though, guys. I appreciate your time and I will catch you in the next one.